question of the week this week is the virgin birth. Uh, can we put that slide up again, just a, uh, the, the Botticelli slide? Now, people have this idea. Uh, I mean, the one aspect I would have about this painting, I do think it's beautiful, but I think Mary was just basically normal. Every time she's painted with a halo or a glow, I think there's something wrong uh, with that. I think she was, the point about her is she was a normal uh, woman, young woman. But my question of the week is, do you believe in the virgin birth? And, and it's usually people who, there used, there used to be, well, there still is a movie called Zeitgeist, which lots of young people watched. And it kind of, it was one of these uh, things that challenge myths. Um, you know, misinformation is the word of the, the year, and people say, oh, this is all misinformation. And I've been asked several times, people saying things like, there are hundreds of Greek, Egyptian, and Roman myths about babies being born on the 25th of December. Why should we believe yours? Well, the statement is itself wrong. There aren't hundreds of myths. Yes, there's Mithras and Horus, but, and there are, there are examples of babies being born without human sexual relations in, in the myths, but they're not taught like this. Uh, Tony Jordan, who is a scriptwriter for the BBC series EastEnders, which none of you ever watched because you're people of such impeccable taste, but uh, if you do watch soap operas, you probably did watch it. And he was asked to do an excellent mini-series on the nativity, which it was, it's still worth seeing. And he describes his experience in researching this this way. I sat with these men of the cloth. These were organized religion. They were all explaining to me about the nativity and about how it never happened. And they were saying, well, of course, Mesopotamia, mumble, mumble. There was always the legend of the virgin birth. And I'm thinking, what? Hang on a minute. You're on the wrong side. That doesn't work. So I despair of them. And he actually went and said, I just give up on the clergy, the ones he was speaking to. And he just took the account from the Bible and turned it into the series, which is why the series is so good. Another clergyman who is supposed to be an evangelical, Rob Bell, said, the virgin birth is like one brick in a wall of theology. What do you lose if you lose that one brick? To which the best reply was, nothing except Jesus. You know, there are some bricks that are pretty important. They're quite foundational. I'm not going to go around my house just now um, and start removing bricks, probably because I think someone's already been doing it. I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm not going to start removing bricks because I don't know which one's going to cause it to fall down. But you don't remove the virgin birth. To me, Christianity without the virgin birth is like a man who goes into a local fish and chip shop and announces, I'll have a fish supper, but with no fish. Well, what's the point of that? Christianity without the virgin birth of Christ is Christianity without Christ. Now, I have to confess, I have never understood why the virgin birth was seen as such a stumbling block, even when I wasn't a Christian. If human beings can manufacture a situation whereby a woman can become pregnant without the necessity of of sexual intercourse, why would we consider it impossible for an almighty God to do so? He doesn't need IVF. The problem is with this question is that people start off with the presupposition that such a God does not exist and therefore a non-existent being cannot perform such a miracle. And that's what we call circular reasoning. To claim a virgin birth cannot happen because the being who could make such a thing happen does not exist really says nothing other than about our own prejudices. What we're not saying is it did happen. I believe it did happen because God has revealed it in his word. But there's no logical reason to think that it couldn't happen. And if you want to look at this more, I mentioned the book before. Um, I wrote a chapter on it in there, and you're welcome uh, to have it, especially if you're not a believer and you're seeking. Love.